If you're building your business on the cloud, you know how important it is to keep your cloud environments secure. In today's digital world, a single security breach can be catastrophic, leading to data loss, reputational damage, and financial impact. But don't worry, in this video, I'll walk you through the actionable steps that you can take to secure your cloud environments and protect your valuable assets. We'll cover everything from understanding the shared responsibility model to implementing strong identity and access management, securing your network architecture, encrypting your data, and so much more. Before we get started, you should check out my weekly cloud newsletter where I share free resources, tutorials, boot camps, and so much more, helping you make your cloud move and also support subscribe to the channel because we're so close to hitting our first 100,000 subscribers. So first things first, let's talk about the shared responsibility model. When you're working with a cloud provider like AWS, security is a team effort. Your provider is responsible for securing the underlying infrastructure, such as the physical data centers, the network, and the virtualization layer. But when it comes to securing your applications, data, and access management, that's completely your responsibility. A lot of founders and tech teams make this mistake. They think that the cloud is secure by default. This is not the case. You need to understand the split responsibility between you and the provider. Imagine you are in a boat with your cloud provider. You're both responsible for keeping the boat afloat and getting to your destination safely, but you have different roles and responsibilities. Your cloud provider is like the captain of the ship. They're responsible for the underlying infrastructure, making sure the boat is seaworthy, the engines are running smoothly, and the navigation systems are working properly. In cloud terms, this means they take care of things like the physical security of data centers, network infrastructure and security, virtualization layer, and ensuring the availability and resilience of the cloud platform i.e. your boat. But here is the thing. Once you are on the boat, you are responsible of your own safety and the safety of your passengers. In the cloud, your passengers are your applications, your data, and your users. So it's up to you. Secure your applications and code, manage access to your resources and data, configure your network and security settings, encrypt sensitive data, and ensure compliance and relevant regulations and standards. That is a lot, but think of it like this. Your cloud provider will make sure the boat doesn't sink, but it's up to you to make sure your passengers are wearing life jackets. You're not overloading the boat, and you're following the rules of the sea. Now, the specifics of the shared responsibility model can vary depending on the service model that you're using. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or software as a service. With infrastructure as a service, you have the most control and responsibility. You're responsible for securing your operating systems, your applications, and your data, whilst your cloud provider takes care of the underlying infrastructure. This is like using Amazon EC2s. With platform as a service, your provider manages the operating system, the runtime, but you're still responsible for your applications and your data. This is more like using AWS Lambda or AWS Beanstalk. And with software as a service, your provider takes on most of the responsibility, managing everything from the infrastructure to the application layer. But you are still responsible for securing your data and managing user access. Software as a service in AWS is like using AWS workspaces or work docs. Now, no matter which model that you're using, it's crucial to understand where your responsibilities lie and to take a proactive approach to security. This means clearly defining security roles and responsibilities within your own business, implementing strong identity and access management policies, assessing and monitoring your security posture, and staying up to date with the latest security practices and threat landscape. Remember, security is a shared responsibility, but it's ultimately up to you to ensure the safety and security of your applications and data in the cloud. By understanding the shared responsibility model and taking ownership of your own security responsibilities, you can build and scale on the cloud with confidence, knowing that you're doing everything in your power to protect your business and your customers. And if you feel lost or overwhelmed, then drop me an email. My business, Solcurity, helps secure cloud environments for businesses all over the world, and we can certainly help you do the same. Now let's move on to the next critical aspect of securing your cloud environment, 
implementing strong identity and access management. Think of IAM like the security system of a building. It's responsible for controlling who can enter the building, which floors and rooms they can access, and what actions they are allowed to perform once they're inside the building. Getting IAM right is crucial because just like a building, you wanna make sure only authorized people are getting in and they're not accessing areas that they shouldn't. So what are the best practices for identity and access management? First and foremost, you need to implement multi-factor authentication. MFA is like having a second form of verification to enter the building. It's not enough to just have the key card, which can be lost or stolen. You need another factor like biometric scanning or code sent to your phone to prove you are exactly who you say you are. Next, you need to implement least privileged access. This means giving users the minimum level of access that they need to do their job and nothing more. It's like having restricted areas in the building. Not everyone needs access to the executive suite or the server room. By restricting access to sensitive resources and data, you can minimize the damage if an account is compromised. Now, it's also important to review and audit user permissions often. People's roles and responsibilities can change over time and you need to make sure their access levels are adjusted accordingly. It's like keeping your building's access control list up to date. You don't want to allow access to someone who no longer works for your company. Another key aspect of IAM is using role-based access control. This allows you to define roles within specific permissions and assign users to those roles. It's like having different job functions in the buildings, managers, engineers, and admin staff, each with their own specific areas of access and responsibilities. Now, the key is to be thoughtful and deliberate in how you set up your IAM permissions. Don't just give everyone admin access because it's easier, but it's also very lazy. Take the time to define the roles and permissions that align with your business needs and security best practices. And remember, IAM is not a one and done task. You need to continuously monitor and manage your IAM setup, review users and role permissions, and make sure to remove access for users who no longer need it. For example, when an employee leaves your company. I've seen countless times where ex-employees still have access to systems and applications, even though they left that business many, many months ago. Now let's talk about securing your network architecture. Imagine your cloud network as a bustling city, like New York, London, or Dubai, with data and services constantly moving around like cars and pedestrians. Just like a well-planned city, your network needs to be designed with security in mind and from the ground up. The foundation of your secure cloud network is a VPC in AWS. VPC is your gated communities providing a private and isolated environment for your resources. But just like a gated community, you need to carefully plan your entry and your exit points, as well as your internal security measures. When you're setting up your VPC, you should implement network segmentation and subnets. This is like dividing your city into different districts, each with its own security requirements. You might have a downtown subnet for your public facing web servers, a residential subnet for your internal databases, and an industrial subnet for your backend processing systems. By segmenting your network, you can apply granular security controls to each subnet. This is like having different security measures for each district in your city. Your downtown area might have surveillance cameras and regular police patrols, whilst your residential area has neighborhood watch programs and gated access. In the cloud, these security controls are implemented through security groups and network access control lists. Security groups are like your building's security system, controlling which traffic can enter and exit each resource, such as your servers and your databases. Network access control lists are like the city checkpoints, controlling traffic between subnets so between your residential area and your downtown. When configuring your security groups and network access control list, you should follow the principle of least privilege. This means only allowing the minimum access required for each resource to function. It's like only giving keys to specific rooms a person needs access in a building, rather than the master key to the entire complex. Another critical aspect of network security is protecting data in transit. 
Whenever data moves across your network, whether between your subnets or in and out of your VPC, it's exposed to potential interception and tampering. Now to secure data in transit, you should use encryption protocols like HTTPS for web traffic and VPNs for remote access. HTTPS is like armoring your cars, protecting the passengers, i.e. the data inside as they move across the city. VPN is like building secure tunnels between buildings, ensuring safe passage for authorized personnel. But network security doesn't stop at the boundaries of your cloud environment. Many businesses run in a hybrid cloud model, with resources spread across public cloud, private cloud, and on-premise environments. In this case, you need to ensure connectivity between these different cloud environments using a service such as Direct Connect. And lastly, let's not forget about the outskirts of your city, the internet. While your VPC provides a secure internal environment, you still need to protect against external threats when your resources communicate with the outside world. And this is where services like AWS WAF, a web application firewall can come into the picture. These are like your city's border security, inspecting incoming traffic for potential threats like SQL injection or cross-site scripting attacks. A WAF provides an additional layer of security for your public facing resources. Securing your network architecture requires a multi-layered approach, much like securing a city. By using VPCs, implementing network segmentation and access controls, encrypting data in transit, ensuring secure hybrid connectivity, and protecting against external web threats, you can build a robust and resilient network security posture. Remember, your network is the backbone of your cloud environment. Investing time and effort into securing it properly will pay off in the long run, providing a solid foundation for your applications and your data. Now, in addition to securing your network, you also need to protect your data itself through encryption. Encryption is like putting your data in a safe. Even if someone manages to get their hands on it, they won't be able to read it without the key. In the cloud, you should encrypt your data both at rest, i.e. when it's stored, and in transit when it's moving across the network. Many cloud providers provide easy-to-use encryption services, such as AWS KMS, the key management service. When setting up encryption, it's best practice to use customer managed keys. This means you, not your cloud provider, can control the encryption keys. It's like keeping the key to your safe yourself. Rather than giving it to someone else to hold on to, you should also implement secure key management practices. This includes rotating your encryption keys often, storing them securely, and tightly controlling access to them. Finally, to maintain the security of your cloud environment, you need to continuously monitor and log all activities. Monitoring and logging is like having security cameras and guards patrolling your building. They keep an eye out for any suspicious activities and provide a record of everything that happens. In the cloud, you should enable logging for all critical resources and activities. This includes things like user logins, API calls, resource configurations, and network traffic. It's also important to centralize your log management and analysis. This is like having your security cameras feed into a single monitoring room. By aggregating your logs in a central location, you can more easily monitor for potential security incidents across your entire cloud environments. Now, to help with this, consider using security information and event management tools. These are like AI-powered security systems that can automatically detect unusual activities and potential threats based on your logs and your metrics. Finally, make sure you set up alerts and notifications for any unusual or suspicious activities detected. By getting immediate alerts, you can quickly investigate and respond to potential security incidents. The key with monitoring and logging is to be proactive. Don't wait until security incident happens to start looking at your logs. You want to review your logs and monitor them often for any unusual activities. Again, you can set up alerting and AI to monitor these on your behalf, even when everything seems to be running smoothly. Building security in your cloud environments takes time, patience, and expertise but you are way better off building with security at the start and security in mind to prevent any breaches and hacks. If you need help with your cloud security environments, go check out Solcurity or drop me an email linked in my description. As always, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already 
and I'll see you on the next one.